Hi, I'm Katie Feldman, and several years ago I started a program called Save the Salamanders in Middlesex, Vermont. Save the Salamanders is mostly focused on trying to conserve a specific species of salamander, but my purpose in telling you about it is much larger. I hope that by telling other people what I've done, I can help give them the information and encouragement they need to start a project of their own. One thing I've done to try and make starting a project easier is to develop a simplified five-step structure that outlines all the basic steps needed in a fledgling project. I'll tell you what the steps are, then I'll show you how I did them for Save the Salamanders. Step 1. You should find a project that you're passionate about and that has enough charisma that you think you'll be able to get others interested in it too. So, Save the Slugs and Protect the Leaf Mold are probably not such good ideas. Also, it's best to choose something local and not too huge, just to get started. Step 2. Do some research. You should find out all the information you can about your topic, including ways to solve the problem, and if there are any other organizations working on the same issue. If there are, you should probably try and contact them. Step 3. Educate and recruit. Get your issue into the public eye. Tell people about what you're doing. Try to get press coverage and spread it by word of mouth get people invested in helping you. You can recruit friends, family, anyone who seems interested. Tell them what's at stake and what they can do to help. Step 4. Involve people. Get them to actually do something. You can form a club or group, meet informally, or just communicate by email or phone. Make sure that people are committed. Get them to really accomplish something. And Step 5. Viral spread. Let your project grow. Encourage others to start projects of their own, or just try and expand your own to cover a greater area. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I've always loved amphibians, so when I learned firsthand how easy it was to kill salamanders during a migration without realizing it, I decided to help them by raising awareness any way I could. That was my step one. I found that people are generally interested and want to hear about these beautiful creatures. My step two is fairly self-explanatory. I did some research on the internet and found and contacted other organizations involved in amphibian crossings. For step three, I wrote articles for the local newspaper and started to tell people about my project, recruiting family, friends, anyone I could get to help. In Step 4, I created phone trees and email lists of volunteers who would be willing to help cross salamanders during the migration. Then I used these resources to get my volunteers to join me in crossing amphibians. That takes me to where I am right now. Step 5. Using this DVD to help others start projects on their own or start versions of Save the Salamanders. I also created a website with all the information needed to learn about salamander crossing. One of the things that it's most important to remember when starting a project is that you don't have to be an extrovert to be a leader. Many famous environmentalists have been writers, not traditional leaders. I'm certainly not extroverted, but I have learned to deal with being in a leadership position in my own way. You have to be innovative and discover what methods work for you. For me. I focus on using my writing and my artistic skills. You might have different strengths, but whatever they are, you can make them work to your advantage. If you don't think you're quite ready to find or start a project of your own, but want to do something, then maybe starting a Save the Salamanders branch in your hometown would be a good place to begin. In using my framework, you already have most of the materials needed to begin ready-made for you. Everything you need should be found on my website. So remember, the most important thing is to take initiative. It doesn't matter if you're starting a Save the Salamanders program or a project of your own. All that matters is that you try. It's a simple fact that if no one tries to do anything about the world, nothing will ever get done. It could be as simple as trying to reduce the waste levels in your school cafeteria, or as complex as monitoring the health of a local river. As soon as you get one other person involved, you're not alone. Everything has to start somewhere, and if you're motivated, something great could start with you. 
If you'd like more information on creating a Save the Salamanders project in your area, please view Save the Salamanders Part 1 on YouTube or visit www.savethesalamanders.org.